What's up guys, there's a lot of great things about these Total Gyms or Slotting Bench Trainers, but perhaps one of the best benefits you guys can reap on this equipment is its positive benefits on your joints. And by that, I mean you can reap all those great benefits of resistance training with much less stress and strain on your joints. And when I say joints, I'm talking nearly essentially all of them because I constantly hear stories and work with people who got really bad shoulders, elbows, knees, ankles, uh, wrists, essentially all of them, obviously backs as well. Uh, but a lot of people have some really serious injuries and they find that by working on this equipment, it doesn't seem to exacerbate any of those previous injuries or discomforts. And even for those of you guys that don't have any serious joint injuries or problems, I talk to a lot of guys who are ex-powerlifters, bodybuilders, just old gym goers in general, like myself included, that find they're getting all the benefits from resistance training on this equipment, but much less strain and tension and soreness on their joints. So compared to traditional resistance training, like dumbbells, barbells, and even certain like resistance bands to an extent, a total gym gives you all those muscle building benefits without that stress and strain of the usual gym equipment. So in this video, I wanna talk about how a total gym can and does save your joints, as well as how this translates to effective stress on your muscles. So basically you're getting all the gain without any of the pain. And this is something I always was very cognizant whenever I talk to older trainees, even since I was younger, I always find that as they get older, one of the common things I hear people tell me is that they wish they did things a little bit differently, trained maybe a little bit smarter, but basically paid a little bit more attention to how their joints and the feedback that their body was giving them because as we get older, this stuff's gonna catch up to us and at the end of the day, we wanna reap all those rewards and minimize as much risk as possible. So if you find any of this information at all helpful, as always, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, in my opinion, this valuable content with others and hit that notification bell if you guys wanna stay motivated and get some good training ideas and tips on this type of equipment. Now, good resistance and strength training really is kind of a double-edged sword. On one hand, it does amazing things through musculoskeletal system and building strong muscles, bones, ligaments, tendons, and just supporting overall joint health which transfers to how you'll perform really at any age, but in many accounts, it's actually strongly associated with longevity, just because you're allowed to take care of yourselves and function into ripe old age. But while effective strength training can and does build healthy bones, we know that the ligaments, tendons, and cartilage just around the joint area in general can be a little iffy, especially with our own genetic makeup as we age, and there's just so many other variables, so we have to ultimately be mindful that we can definitely overdo this stress, which may lead to joint problems in the short or even the long term. So if you are or have been weight training and you're wondering why it's leaving you so sore and you're wondering why your joints are achy, this is probably a sign, just an early warning sign to you that definitely something in your training should change. So at the end of the day, when we start comparing total gym training to other types of resistance training, your body doesn't really care as far as the type of resistance it's receiving, whether it be from free weights, machines, body weight, uh, resistance bands, maybe even like water resistance, even though it's kind of a subpar form of that, maybe I'll get into it, but later, it will grow muscle, tendons, ligaments, bone, depending on the amount of stress, how often you perform it, and how that stress is expressed on these various tissues, which is how you potentially could argue objectively, which of those types of resistance training might be most beneficial to you and your goals. Now that last part is really what we're gonna focus in on, is how that stress is dissipated across these tissues. Because compared to free weights, such as dumbbells and barbells, that most people have in their home gym, a total gym is much more flexible and forgiving with that tension displaced on your joints. As versatile as free weights are, they're pretty much limited in the exercises, range of motion, and even strength curve of exercises. Now we don't need to get into some sort of deep biomechanical discussion here, but simply stating, especially for muscle building purposes, you wanna put as much stress on the desired working muscle and less on the moving joints, and therefore the tendons and ligaments as well. Notice I'm not saying to put zero stress on the joints, because some of the benefits of resistance training is also building up your joint integrity. So you definitely don't wanna neglect them. So when you start comparing with other forms of resistance, like water resistance, that doesn't give you that nice, different kind of biomechanical stress to your bones, ligaments, tendons specifically, that doesn't tend to really help that area out as much as traditional free weights do. Depending how flexible you are into getting into various positions, the total gym allows you to get into very advantageous positions where a majority of that force and tension is directed on the muscle. Something also to consider are two forces that are expressed on the musculoskeletal system, and that's compression and tension. Compression is kind of what it sounds like, and you can think of examples of any kind of horizontal pushing, vertical pushing through inverted presses, uh, even chest presses, even low bring exercise in your legs where your joints and your muscles and bones are kind of behind this kind of compressive force. And then there's also tension, which is kind of force that is more kind of lengthening or pulling type uh, pressure that you maybe would exert from things like rowing, uh, hanging, doing pull-ups, something of that regard, both of which are great stressors to the musculoskeletal system that other forms might not do as well. Again, a good example of that would be swimming or water resistance. The great thing about traditional resistance training with barbells and free weights is you get a nice combination of compression and tension-related forces. Where I'm doing like bicep curls, presses, rows, 
The only difference is with a total gym, if I jump on this glide board, what's unique about this is I can dissipate and take more of a focus and more of an emphasis on the desired working muscle. If I'm doing things like standing bicep curls like this, even standing presses, certainly it's great that it kind of works your whole system, but let's say you have bad backs, bad knees, a bad elbow or shoulder or whatever on various types of specific exercises, it's hard to really kind of take off some pressure on certain joints. Versus if I jump on this glide board, since I'm on this incline, I can do a lot of things like even in the bicep curl where my lower back now is not really involved. I can isolate even the rotation in my shoulder if I'm in a good position versus if I'm doing standing bicep curls, even standing presses. The various kind of rotational strength curve you go through in a given exercise can actually stress certain muscles and joints more or less to a certain degree. And this I believe is one of the primary reasons when I talk to people, they're so surprised they're doing the exact same exercises, the exact same movements, but they're saying they're coming back much less sore on the joints, but they're also feeling it a lot more directly on the muscles. And this is huge in many ways because you guys know, sometimes you feel your muscles are recovered, but maybe your joints are not. So you have to take an extra day off or maybe you don't do as much effort in a particular workout. So really it's a win for sure because you ultimately can do more work on that given musculature and then come back and actually hit the muscle more frequently throughout the week. Which at the start of the video, as I said, I'm still honestly so surprised at all these stories I hear from people who come at this equipment with no problems whatsoever, who previously couldn't do any resistance training, which if that's you, definitely share your stories down below in the comment section. I'm sure a lot of people can definitely benefit from hearing that. Now, of course, there's no guarantee this will work for everybody and that your joints will feel totally good, especially if you had some sort of previous injury. And certainly you have to ensure that you're doing proper technique and you're doing these exercises correctly to ensure minimal stress and damage to certain things. But that's why I'm also here for a resource. If you guys have any specific questions, definitely go to signingmenstrainer.com if you guys want any one-on-one -on -one consulting and some sort of form checks. I offer that service here, shameless plug. But with all that being said, I could make multiple videos on this topic and I can in the future on specific things if you guys want to hear it. I'm talking about the shoulders, back, legs, any other type of extremity you want and how this machine seems to be better, or at least a better option for some people compared to dumbbells and free weights they've been doing in the past. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope this video is beneficial. If you know someone who can benefit from this equipment, again, share this video so other people know about the great benefits of sliding bench training, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you.